All right. All right, people start. Hello to all participants. Let's just Hello. wait for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. How many other people, people will attend this meeting? Hmm? Uh, he asked that how many people will join this meeting today? Um, it's, it's hard to know for sure. We have mm -hmm. a lot of registrations, mm -hmm. um, but there's no option for each registrant to mm -hmm. to like to tell me whether they will what they will participate uh -uh. which session so we have many sessions okay and when they register register for all sessions mm -hmm. so i'm i'm not sure how many will attend but i'm sure there will be a lot of people who are waiting <coughs> to watch the recording afterwards Okay, okay. Yeah. Hello. Okay, let's wait for one more minute and yep. then we can start. Okay, I'm gonna allow every participant to be able oh. to talk. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So if you so if the if you feel like at the end of a presentation you would like to unmute yourself and ask any questions please feel free to do so okay so let's start i'm gonna just kind of like provide a little bit of information just as an introduction so thank you so much everyone for joining this webinar this is our last session for internal learning webinar already for world day for farmed animals asia um, my name is Wedge. I am the campaign manager of Synergy Animal. I'm based in Thailand and I am one of the co-organizers of this year's World Day for Farm Animals Asia. So there's so many other webinars, lectures and activities that you can participate, not just this one. And you can find out more about World Day for Farm Animals Asia in the link that I just sent in the chat box. Um, so now very important point that I would like to reiterate again. I know some of you who have participated before is probably tired of hearing this already, but it's very important. This is an internal learning series and only open for animal protection NGOs. So please do not share any information that you learn to the public. And please do not invite people who are not affiliated with animal protection NGO to participate. Um, and I would like to apologize that I have to be very strict about this. Some people have been rejected before for the reg registration. And um, I would like to apologize about that. But if you use um, email like Gmail or Hotmail to register, it's a little difficult for me to identify whether you are affiliated with an animal protection NGO or not. So I simply remove <laughs> your registration. I hope you find it okay to register again with the official email address and that you find it okay to participate in this webinar. All right, so for the Q&A session, if you have any questions at all, please use the Q&A panel to submit it to our speakers. And then at the end, I will, we will go through all the questions afterwards. Or if you prefer, you can also unmute yourself and ask the question directly to our speakers as well. So now back to our webinar. Joining us today are two speakers from Korean Animal Welfare Society, also known as Kawa. And I really appreciate their presence here because it's actually today, it's actually a national holiday in Korea, but then they still take their times off to share their knowledge and their expertise with us. So here with us today is Paul and Sung Shol. Yeah. And so, and also one more person, Sanwa, will join us today in spirit and in recording. So please take it away, Paul. Yep, thank you. Uh, so I'm Paul from Korea, and we prepare some video of our presentation. And I first, I need to apologize that we are not doing the live.
but we record first our presentation and we share in this session. And after that, we will have a Q&A session and uh, if you have any question, we will uh, enter together. So I will share the video and if you have uh, any question, just type in the Q&A panel and uh, is there any problem while you're watching it? Just let us know by texting. So I will share the video first. Uh, give me a second. Hi, uh, I am Sonwa uh, from Korean Animal Welfare Association. And first of all, I apologize for uh, this filmed presentation. Uh, this is because due to some um, circu circumstance that we face. And, but also, we are, I think it's great a great pleasure to share our campaigns and what we learned and some challenges ahead. Um, yeah, I'd like to share a um, cage-free campaign in Korea, which is done by our organizations. And although the history is quite short, but we are planning to enlarge our campaign from now on. So let's move in then. Uh, first of all, we'd li I'd like to introduce my organization. The Korean Animal Welfare Association is one of the major animal rights uh, organization which was established in 2000. And we are working for improving welfare of animals by um, policy advocacy and bringing public mobilizing campaigns and also organize some education programs. And our organization uh, is also running an animal shelter, uh, which protects more than 400 dogs and cats there. So let's get into our work. Uh, yeah, we actually we cover lots of issues from companion animals, including the banning dog meats, and some, some programs for street cats and the captive animals, uh, also, also the farmed animals. So what I want to talk about for this presentation is uh, basically focused on the, on the campaigns and what we done uh, in the field of the farmed animals. So, so let's get into the parts one. Uh, so, so what we, what we did for the farmed animals, uh, at the beginning, uh, around 2000 or 2005, uh, we, are, we were basically uh, focused on doing some research and monitoring the farmed animals, factory, farmed animals and also the factory farming system uh, because uh, the public and our society, our Korean society was not interested, even didn't know about what the farmed animals and what the issues on there. So we tried to address the welfare of farmed animals basically on the animal cruelty. So uh, that includes uh, the battery cage and pig stalls and stamping out live, live stocks. And, and second, we host some campaigns to improve the public awareness about farm animals and welfare, and which uh, we hope to, we hope to, which leads to reduce the consumption of farmed animals itself. The third thing, uh, we are deeply engaged in activities of legal amendment for the promotion of farm animal welfare. Uh, for example, we are uh, we were pushing the government to set the standards for the uh, for the animal welfare certifications. Uh, the pictures, two pictures on the right side, you can see, and also uh, like a like joining the OWA. Uh, now so we try to 
build the solidarity in not only on not only the national level but also the international level. So we met uh, a great colleagues uh, within the OWA, so that uh, so that we can bring our campaigns more effectively, and which was. Which is very yeah, which is great opportunity for our organization. And we not only the joining the OWA, we also every year we also join the Pen Live Exports campaign. Okay, in part two, I'd like to introduce the cage-free campaigns in Korea. Uh, basically, uh, Kawa is the only organization that we that uh, in Korea and focused on cage-free campaigns. We are aiming to. Uh, bringing as much as uh, as many as uh, cage-free commitments from the from the corporates and also the individual consumers, so that we promote the welfare of the laying hands in Korea. So uh, we have uh, around the four strategy in terms of cage-free campaigns. The first one would be um, calling for the promo calling for promoting cage-free environment for corporates and also consumers, uh, which contains the consumers' interest and supports for the animal welfare are critical and very much necessary. And so that so we use those public power as a kind of as a leverage to the as many as corporates to commit their cage free. Second, uh, we try to induce the companies to declare the cage free by taking cage free companies within the same fields as a leverage. Like for example, uh, I will explain the examples later about uh, Pulmo One, and one of the biggest uh, egg, egg production companies. We use their their cage-free commitments as a leverage to persuade other other corporates in the same field. And uh, also, second, you can see the purple ones. The market collie is our next target at the national at the national level the next targets. Um, we induce the company in also, we, we are also focused on the egg retail industry to embrace and cage-free commitments. We thought la last year uh, we joined the Asian summits in Taiwan. We are very much uh, impressed by the what, what have been doing, what have been done in Gulf in Taiwan. So this year we also um, focused on the retail industry to pledge the cage free. And the last strategy that we have is we have uh, continually uh, communicate with the cage free farms and laying hands industries. Um, we've been talked with them for a long time to find uh, way to promote the cage-free kind of movements within the, within the national level. So that's one of the big parts of our cage-free campaigns. You can see the slides on here. This is our uh, cage-free campaign histories in Korea, uh, which starts from 2017. Uh, unfortunately, um, in 2017, there were big issues on egg industry and industry, which was uh, which was that um, eggs and egg products um, were all contaminated by the pesticide, um, and that uh, that contaminated eggs were distributed in Europe and Korea. Due to that issues, uh, the government of Korea decided to adopt the egg shell stamping system. Uh, you can see the eggs on the slide and, and there, are, there are some numbers and letters and, and numbered at the end of the, the stamp, um, which shows that uh, the environment, the, the last number on the egg shell 
shows that the environment of laying hands so that the consumers uh, mm, can be noticed that the, where these eggs are come from. The number one me, it means that uh, it's case is free range eggs, and the number two is barn, uh, and number third is cage four three and four is cage and battery cage egg. So the people can see that the environment of laying hands. So uh, after uh, adopting that actual stamping, uh, the our organization is trying to. I was trying to persuade the Pum one, one of the uh, biggest uh, egg, egg production company in 2018. Uh, we had a long uh, negotiations and persuade, persuasion with uh, Pum One. Finally, they um, they pledged uh, that uh, they will be the cage-free uh, companies. At the similar time, we also joining the member of as a member of the OWA, which was a great opportunity to uh, learn about um, campaign tactics and advocacy tactics tactics from all other uh, countries. And after joining um, the OWA as uh, one of the member. Uh, we launched two big uh, cage-free campaigns in Korea. Uh, first one was a uh, campaign against uh, McDonald's. Uh, uh, let, me let me introduce some history about that. And around that time, McDonald's has uh, McDonald pledged their commitment in a global level, and we captured that. Uh, we all we try to uh, push the McDonald branch, uh, the branch in Korea, to also be uh, cage free. So we uh, launched big uh, public uh, partic participating campaigns against McDonald's, and which, which was a great success. And the second one was a campaign against Starbucks, uh, which was uh, which was aligned with the. Uh, OWA our targets and the strategy and uh, and the market clearly as I said before is our new targets in 2020 uh, let's getting into the case study uh, that case free campaigns uh, which is done by our organizations there are three companies that I'd like to show you uh, first one was McDonald's, but you can see uh, the half cage free. Mm. Uh, I will tell you the what why it has uh, cage free is only half. And the second one is Pum One. Uh, they said they will they will be cage free by 2020. And the Starbucks uh, they also made a commitment uh, to be cage free by 2029. And the first one, the campaign against the McDonald's was, yeah, militarily, it was not easy at all. Uh, first, the McDonald's headquarters uh, made their commitment to be cage free by 2025. And because the headquarters pledged, pledged to be cage free, uh, there we, we easily say, think that they must follow their global level policy, but uh, the Korea, the McDonald's of Korea uh, didn't. So we launched a big uh, public participating campaigns in Korea, uh, which calls unha un unhappy meal campaign. So that campaign was quite uh, hard and strong. You can see the pictures on this slide. We did uh, some press conference and, and one man de demonstration as well. And we also um, wanted to the citizen um, to join this campaign as a great, uh, which can be a great support. So uh, basically the public participation campaign was a 
was that the people blocked the McDonald, all the McDonald branches in Korea in the battery cage. And they shared these photos on the online. And I could say this campaign resonated with the public very much. And finally, the McDonald's Korea responded our actions. So, but the, unfortunately, we could say this is a half success because the they uh, made a commitment to be uh, to be cage free only for the shell eggs and uh, not for the liquid eggs. So we could say that we achieved only half mm, in terms of uh, the campaign against the McDonald's. So what we are basically doing now is keep monitoring and try to communicate with McDonald's so that they can 100% uh, including the liquid eggs to be cage free. And the second company was Pulmo. Uh, the the Pulmo is uh, the first cage free declination company in Korea and also it is one of the biggest uh, egg production companies, uh, branded egg production companies in Korea. So uh, they account for 80, almost 80% 80 of Korean branded eggs, which, was very, which is huge. And uh, we have uh, cooperated with uh, this company since two, around 2000s. So we try to have uh, continual communications with this company and finally so within the long and negotiations and persuasions uh, final in 2018 the Pulmuan has uh, had a memorandum with our organizations uh, which was about they will be 100% cage free by 2028 and actually they are doing a good job right now and now tw around 20 percent uh, of branded uh, their branded eggs they produce are already cage free and to 50 percent by 2023 and finally 100 percent cage free by 2028 I think they can make it as they uh, committed but what Pumon has been doing was uh, impressive. Uh, they had um, they have a CSR report and they uh, contained the cage free contained cage free data which was which they committed. They put apart from uh, memorandum, uh, they are doing a very good job in a, in other part of their uh, business. Uh, for example, they. Uh, contain animal welfare policy uh, within their uh, CSR reports and they are running cage-free education booth uh, uh, so that the children know the know about the animal animal welfare issues more easily second example is Starbucks uh, Starbucks is one of the largest and biggest um, Coffee company in in Korea, which uh, are there, which their revenue in 2019 is uh, around 26.5 billion dollars, and um, we because of uh, this huge volume and huge uh, influence that Starbucks has within the Korea, we focus. We think that, naturally think that they have their ability to be 100% cage free uh, in short terms. So we tried to have tried to have a conversation uh, with the Starbucks and in particular uh, Starbucks, in particular we focused on uh, the fact that Starbucks has uh, stressed their uh, social responsibility as a leading company and the image that, uh, or if that is re reflected by um, 
public. So they are very much caring about uh, how they are showed to the public and their responsibility. So we are um, focusing on this point. Uh, we try to communicate with the Starbucks. <clears throat> Uh, we had uh, also several meetings with the key stakeholders within the within the Starbucks, and or, and and used the Pullman's cage-free decla declaration as a leverage so that uh, that influenced uh, the Starbucks decision. So to, in finally um, 2019, uh, we do we did some press conference and some of the protests and finally which uh, affected the uh, Starbucks to uh, have a decision um, to be 100 cage free 100 percent cage free uh, by um, signing the memorandum with the, our organizations and we think that it's uh, one of the great successful examples that we had since we uh, launched uh, cage-free campaigns in uh, from 2000 around 2015. Hello, this is Paul from Kawa. Uh, I will continue with this pre presentation. Uh, so this is part four. It's uh, raising public awareness on cage-free. I think most of the Asia country will agree with this because uh, the Asia part the public awareness is a little bit lower than the uh, western part. So, uh, so related with cage-free campaign, one, one of the main issues in Korea is public awareness also. We just start farm animal welfare in here. So animal welfare certification was just started from 2012. And only 10% of laying hands farm is get, it, get this certification. So citizens of Korea only meet with farm animals in their table, so they cannot see what is the difference with cage egg and cage free eggs. That is the reason why we are trying to raise public awareness farm animal issue. So when we do the cage free campaign, the company always say difficult because of public awareness. They said like the price of cage free egg will not accept it by citizen and people doesn't know different with the cage egg and the cage free eggs. And also they said we cannot get stable supplier and act. So we're trying to show them, which means the companies, how people care about the farm animal welfare and cage free eggs. Uh, like you can see the presentation, we're trying to do like this kind of offering campaign so the citizen can know difference with the cage free eggs and the caged eggs. There is some barriers for the corporate with the cage free commitment with company because of the cost around two times more expensive when we buy the cage free eggs in Korea that is why citizen is hard to access these cage free eggs so that is one of the barriers and another one is uh, it's hard to find the stable cage free egg supplier there's only 10% of laying hands farm using the cage-free systems, but still they are, they are struggle to maintain their farm. In 2017, uh, we did some survey. They found out that 85.3% of citizens agreed that farm animal welfare should be improved. This shows how important of farm animal welfare to people, and companies should care about this. We're trying to raise public awareness with offering campaign like you saw in the uh, presentation. And we use mass media and SNS and ACT. Last year, we made some video related with this cage-free campaign and trying to raise the public awareness. As public awareness increases, so will the corporate cage-free commitment will follow it. So now it's part five, the next target. We set the new target in 2020 because of the coronavirus. Uh, we have to change our target because most of uh, company trying to reduce their expense. So we're trying to find some company that able to do the cage-free commitment. And like I said, when public awareness is raising, company do more cage-free commitment. So we are trying to 
expand the cage-free company in Korea. Uh, in 2020, we choose one of the biggest online retailer company named Market Collie, like uh, Sonwa said before. So in here, you can see some strategy that we set. And last year, we visited Taiwan for OWA Asia Summit. And at that time, we, went, we met with the East, one of the OWA members, and learned Carrefour's cage-free case. The cage-free from retailer company make us shocked. Uh, we had contact with several retailers in Korea, but most of them said, it will be hard to do cage-free commitment because of the producer and consumer's problems. But one of the biggest retailers in Taiwan, which means the Carrefour, did the cage-free commitment. So we think we can do this in Korea also. We consider our next target to retailer company in Korea, but offline retailer seems to be hot for the first target. So we choose online retailer first. The reason why we choose online retailer is this. First, our strategy is make cage-free commitment in online retailer first and spread this to the offline retailer also. Second, within coronavirus situation, online retailer was bigger than before. As you all know, almost every company is getting hard to operate because of coronavirus, except online retailer. And third, online retailers care more their brand image than offline retailers, especially Market Collie, which we targeted now, used huge amount of money of marketing. If we damage their brand image, it will be easier to make them commitments. So like you can see the presentation, in Taiwan case, East make Garfu do, to do the cage free, but we trying to do make online retailer market quality due to the cage-free first, and after that, we're trying to spread this cage-free uh, commitment to the offline retailer also. There's some uh, website of the market quality, and you can see the eggs they sell. And actually, in this website, they're selling the uh, cage-free eggs, and around 50% of their selling products is cage-free eggs, but we want to make them to do the 100% of cage-free. And we think if we can make them cage-free commitment, the wave will spread to the own and offline retailer in Korea. As you can see the presentation, this company have grown rapidly. Sales, sales rise around about seven times from uh, 2015 to 2019. Uh, you can see the left graph that from the 2015, there's only low level of sales, but from now. So in 2019, they selling uh, $317 million. So, and the delivery growth rate is uh, grow rapidly also. The number of deliveries also increased 43 times from uh, 2015 to 2018. In 2018, their delivery uh, amount is 3.76 million. Special thing in this market quality is they are trying to do some social responsibility. So as you can see the presentation, the market quality care about their brand image. So they trying to do some social responsibility and environmentally friendly work. Uh, so in the presentation, you can see our paper challenge. They trying to reduce their plastic bags and plastic uh, containing, and they just using only the paper. And the right image is eat for the earth. So they spread the vegan recipe to the citizen that they can eat some vegetable more, so can save the earth also. So about the problem is the two images below is uh, related with the X. So they share about the information of the uh, X share stamping, like the sauna present before. The number one is uh, um, free range, and number two is uh, bond system, and number three is improved cage, and number four is battery cage. So they show the difference with the well, one to four. 
But the problem is, you can see the right image is description of how they produced caged eggs. It looks like clean and smart, but the reality, the, but the reality is barely caged for hands. So we want them to change for animal welfare policy, not only the paper packaging. This is the video that we used to attack Marketcoli, and they made a promote video that Marketcoli only use healthy ingredients. But we use this video that they use battery cage egg, and we will make this company do cage free commitment within 2020. And this is the last part, the part six challenge and the next step. Uh, cage free campaign in Korea have many difficulties. We will introduce which parts of the campaign are difficult and what will be solution. And there is some challenge that we uh, Organized first challenge is locality. Even if global chain commit cage free, the local branch normally do not follow it. Uh, like the Starbucks case, the Starbucks global do the cage free commitment, but the Starbucks Korea, which means the branch, didn't follow it. And another thing is the landscape. Uh, our land area is one of the main problem for do the cage free commitment because the, the South Korea is not enough landscape for the uh, free range system, but we believe that combine of the bar system and free range, we can do the 100% of cage free in Korea also. The second challenge is lack of produce. Only 2% of laying hands raised by free range, and 90, 98% of hands locked in the cage. Uh, lack of sales is huge challenge also, and another problem is citizen thinks the egg is a low price product. They not trying to use more money on this eggs, so they tr they feel hard to buy a free range eggs also. And third challenge is consumer. In Korea, civic awareness is low, especially on farm animal, and egg pack uh, that is the one of the reasons why we try to raise the public awareness. And another thing is the egg package doesn't show dif different with cage eggs and animal welfare eggs, which means the free range eggs. So people cannot recognize well between them. Uh, in Korea, even the cage egg trying to show how they raise the clean environment, but it's not true. But if you can just see the package, you cannot see the difference with the free range and the caged eggs. And the last thing is veganism. Even if we do the cage-free campaign, some people didn't agree with this because the, there's some problem like male chicks is died when they're young, and even they running the cage-free system, eventually they going to the slaughterhouse. Let's check by one by one then. So the first thing is locality. Um, headquarter and branch issue is one of the biggest issue in Korea. Like example, the Hilton, Global and Korea, and Starbucks and Subway and Act. Uh, most of the global company do the cage-free cage -free commitment, but the branch didn't follow it. A lot of the global company did cage-free commitment, but the branch doesn't follow it. So we use two-track strategy. First is campaigning in Korea, uh, targeting to branch, and make order from the headquarter to branch by cooperation with OWA. Like you can see the presentation, uh, Kawa doing the campaigning in the local place and request the cooperation with OWA and press to the HQ, and HQ make direction to the branch.
thanks to this, the Starbucks Korea and Subway Korea did the cage-free commitment. Uh, and next challenge is lack of produce. When we meet with farmers, most of them say lack of sales is hard, hardest part when they're learning cage-free farm. Even if they make some cage-free system, if there is nothing, nowhere to selling, they cannot survive. So we make company do cage-free commitment so farmers can find a way to sales. Like the Pulmuan case and the Starbucks cases, uh, if there is more company follow the cage-free policy, then there, which means that is more place to sales, so the farmer will survive. And the next thing is the consumer, like I said, is the huge challenge also. Uh, as I know, the West Country citizen has high awareness about farm animal already. But in Korea, we just start from animal ref uh, we just start farm animal welfare, so civic awareness is low. That is why we focus on raise civic awareness and let them know what is animal welfare on farm animal and why cage free is important. We did offline campaign and using the SNS and making a video, so you can see the presentation. You, we do we did some offline campaign for the kids that what is the what is the difference with the cage free eggs and the better cage system. And the right image is using the SNS, so let people know about the animal welfare products of the farm animal. And the image looks like animation is the video that we made last year. I think the, some of you already saw this. Um, we trying to uh, deliver the message to the public, but the problem is most of the public feel uncomfortable when they see some reality of the laying hands. So we using the animate animation way to touching people. When people see this video, they want to do some action, which means to buy more cage free eggs. The last thing is veganism. So as you all know, cage free is not ideal way to make animal welfare for farm animal. Of course this can improve the farm animals welfare but have two main problems I think. First is male chicks. If we want eggs from laying hens, we have the same rate of male chicks, which means they died when they're young. Second is slaughtering. Uh, when hens has low pro produce for eggs, farmers send them to the slaughterhouse and bring the new hens. Uh, around one year and one year half is the average uh, terms for the hens, after that they have to die. So these two things is the main dilemma for us and some citizens complain with this. They doesn't believe the cage free is not the ideal way for the farm animal. Uh, but we believe that cage free is one of the way that we can accomplish the vegan. So as you can see the presentation, Kawa trying to do the cage-free campaign to the public and when public understand more about the farm animal and they agree about the farm animal welfare and the cage-free is done, then people will be more agreeable to do, uh, to go vegan. So this is our presentation and I am not sure we deliver well about our cage free works but if you have if you have any question just type to the uh, zoom then we will check and answer if we can so thank you all right thank you so much i know um, you delivered very well so thank you so much for that um, as a person who work um, to do with cash free work in Thailand, I think I like we I've noticed that we share many challenges and difficulties. So um, I really appreciate that you share with us today. Um, so if you have any questions, please submit th through Q and A panel because if you type in the chat panel, I might miss it. We have some interactions going on in the chat panel. Um, before we went into the Q&A, um, I just have a, one small request. It, 
Um, I just love the videos that you share in the presentation very much, both of them. The one that you use for market curly and also the one where you use the animation to portray the life of like the cruelty of egg laying hands. So I, I just love the animation. So if you could please share the link, um, the YouTube link so that we can watch that videos afterwards, that would uh, be great. Sure, yeah. I will share the chat box now and everyone can see it. Yes, if, if that's possible now, that would be great. But if not, you can send it to my email letter as well. Okay. Um, I'm just curious whether you have an in-house video editor and animator or did you outsource the work? Uh, we did the outsource work because we ah. don't have any person who can make it. It's fine. That's how it works for like for many internet like for many for many NGOs, but it's just curious. But it's right. it's really great. All right, let's go to the QA panel and we have the first question about the legal issues so isn't there any legal issues when you adapt mcdonald's logo for your campaigns and also when you use ronald mcdonald's which is mcdonald's mascot for your mm -hmm. campaign okay so I, I guess some of the country have some this kind of problem to using the mascot or logo to the campaign that makes some e e legal issue but in Korea, there is no big legal problem to damage brand image by using corporate logos or mascots. Uh, rather, if uh, companies raise a legal issue about a campaign because of our using the logos, then it is better for us because the uh, that campaigning become an issue to the public so people can show what is the problem of that company. So it can be, mm, useful way for us if they do some legal way uh, yeah and I think this problem seems to different from country to country uh, in the case of Japan I heard that uh, the legal restriction on the brand image damage campaign are very strict by their legal way of Japan but in Korea it's okay to use it very lucky. That's great. Um, we have, um, we were advised by the lawyer to not adapt the really? logo <laughs> as well. Um, um, we, so we have to f kind of find a way around it. Mm, right. right. Thanks for sharing with us. So let's move on to the next question. How did the animal certification come about and what do the different certifications represent? Um, the anim I think I think Jonathan means uh -huh. certif like cash free certifications and um Jonathan if you don't mind could I please <laughs> ask you to unmute yourself and explain a little bit more about this question? Yes, I, I just saw in Sunha's presentation there was a um, a green logo mark. That I think you mentioned was introduced in 2012 or so. I was just curious: is that only for eggs? Are there the different species as well? And what what does that mean? Does it mean cage-free or are there some other requirements? Okay, I get it. So the certification that I show in the presentation means the uh, it's not just for the hens, but they can adapt to the pigs and cows or dogs. Uh, not dogs, dogs. And the certification means they are doing the animal welfare for the farm animal, but they're including the free range and the bond system together. But they put the number for the laying hands. If there is number one, it means the free range, and which means uh, other thing is number two is the bond system. And uh, when they put this certification to the peaks or the uh, chickens and they have to follow the strict rule by made by government so they have to raise in um, welfare environment when they raise it in the farm and when they transfer and when they slaughter their that farm animal they have to follow the strict rule by made by government so yeah all right next question about market curly so what has been what has Margaret Curley's response to the campaign been so far? 
Okay, so for uh, from the last year, we trying to contact with the market colleague and trying to push them to the uh, cage free, but it is not it is not easy to them to do commitment of the cage free. So in this year, we trying to focus on them, and it's not started yet to the uh, campaigning still, but we are prepared for the press conference next next week after our holiday and after that we will um, we will make some more video and some performance for the attack their brand image and hope the market colleague give us some positive message of cage free all right so currently um you are in the process of like reaching out to them and ask them to adopt this, this right. so the campaign hasn't been launched yet all right, right. Have like have they been informed about the campaign already? Just curious. Oh, sorry, like, I, I didn't hear. Yeah. Um, did you send an email to them and tell mm -hmm. them that you will launch the campaign next week? Yes, yes. I we already emailed them several times, but they just ignore. So we will do our campaign. All right. Okay. Good luck. And <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to keep myself posted about their response. Very mm -hmm. curious. Okay, so let's move on to the next question by Jonathan. Have you had success going through global headquarters to force local companies to respond? So I think he means um, like, yeah, like for example, McDonald's. Um, was it successful to force McDonald's head headquarters? to force local McDonald's to respond to, um, to your demand? Um, so in the Hilton, Hilton case or the, the best Western last year or other maybe Starbucks and they respond by the headquarter but the McDonald's seems not uh, any, did not show any respond yet. They just uh, say they will change the share X but not the liquid eggs by the sauce, using the sauce or the burger. Um, yes, I think we have some, had some success for uh, the HQs for local companies like Starbucks Korea or the, the Hilton Korea. But the, the main issue is uh, if we just push the headquarter, it doesn't make any different. Uh, it, make, it doesn't make any successful campaigning. We have to attack the local and headquarter together, then the, that is the way I think the use for a strategy to make them cage free, but only attack the headquarter doesn't mean anything, I guess. Okay, so has to come from both sides. Right. Next question, what do you mean by branded eggs when you say Pulmuan has 80% market share for branded mm -hmm. eggs? Okay. So I'm not sure about the egg situation in Korea, uh, in other country, but in Korea, we have uh, two types of eggs. There is a uh, egg by egg have some brand like uh, this egg is from Pulmuan or from the other company. And another type is they have no brand. So they just selling from the farm. Mm -hmm. And the branded egg of branded egg market, they shared by 80% is shared by Pulmuan, and that is what I said in the meaning. I am right. not sure I am selling where. <laughs> so if you can understand, just let me know, okay. Sure, um, Jonathan, is, um, did that answer your question? Yes, I think so. So, so would it be um, like eggs sold in supermarkets that have packaging and labeling, they're all, right branded and then maybe yes. one sold at markets or uh, loose without boxes and packaging they're unbranded uh, which which means the selling in the supermarket is branded or so you mean yeah like are, are all eggs sold in supermarkets considered to be branded uh, yes actually most of the eggs in Korea is branded but uh, some of them just selling from the farm directly so except that all of the eggs is the branded egg in Korea. Wow, that's a huge commitment then. Congratulations. Yeah, it is. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. So last question from Ina from Animal Friends Jogja. This is a very interesting question I would like to hear as well. So Animal Friends Jogja um, is very similar to Kawa because they have campaigns for farmed animals and they also run dogs and cats shelter as well. So Ina's question is, I am curious when you started the campaigns for farmed animals, did you get negative feedbacks from your dog cat lovers who don't sympathize at all with farmed animals and maybe even decline like maybe like maybe like these dogs and cat lovers that's kind of like show that they're not interested in donating to your organizations because because you started campaigns for farm animals so if that happens how did you overcome it because ina say that animal friends structure is facing the same problem in indonesia I think the, my partner already answered by the typing, but um, just saying that, uh, yes, we had some problem like this because most of the people donate us because they care about the dogs and cats, not the farm animal. But after when, uh, first, when we do the campaigning, they say uh, they don't want to use their money to the farm animal at the first time. But when the public awareness is uh, become higher than before, and when they care more about the, another animal, not just the cat and the dogs, and they become more agreeable to the, when we doing some campaigning for the uh, farm animal. Actually, in this day, uh, some of the, our members trying to push us to using more money into the farm animal. So I guess this is just a matter of times when the public awareness is become more higher than uh, they will understand when you are doing for the farm animal, and I think when you show the the graph of the difference of um, the number of the farm animal is much bigger than a dog or cats. So if you show the graph and the pain level when they get in the farm, then the member will understand about your campaigning, I guess. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for um, answer that question again. It's just for people who watch who might would like to watch this afterwards as a recording so that they can hear mm -hmm. the question and the answer as well. Okay. So I guess we have reached the end of the webinar. It's exactly in time. So thank you so much, Paul and Sangshul for spending some time on your international holiday to share your knowledge and experience with us today. So this is the last session of the internal learning webinar series already, but the World Day for Farm Animals will be continuing until October the 2nd. There are some other activities, webinars, lectures that you can still attend. Please check out the website that I just sent earlier, like at the beginning of the webinar in the chat box. So, but I can also send again right now so that you have somewhere to check. All right. And the recording for this session and also the previous ones will be available soon. I will send an email to notify everyone when recordings are available. So if you miss any of the past webinars, um, there is some ways you can go and watch and learn. And I guess that's it. It's the end of our internal learning webinar sessions. This is the last session. I would like to thank you all very much for attending, especially the ones who have been attending from the very beginning. And also special thanks to our speakers today, Paul and Sangsho. Please thank Sanwa on my behalf as well. Yeah, very. Okay, and have a great day, evening, afternoon, no matter where you are in the world. And I will see you next year. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.